Is clueless the right term to, to use for us a, a, as Americans when it comes to, to saving energy? We want to do well, we just, we just don't know how. To a certain extent, that is true. Um, however, when, when you think about lighting, for example, when I ask you what is the most effective thing you can do, you're not, we're not quite sure what it is because energy is really invisible. The amount of energy that goes into this room that we're sitting in is, is invisible to us. So if I were to ask you how much energy you use on a day-to-day -day basis, it, you may not know. So it's not surprising to me that people don't know. I did not know myself at the beginning of this experiment. Um, but making these things more visible is really important. So people may not be clueless as to what is um, most effective for them in terms of what is you know, inexpensive, easy to do, um, things like that. But they may be um, sort of off the mark in terms of what is most effective in terms of energy consumption. I tell my daughter this. I think my parents told, told me the same thing. Turn off the lights when you leave a room. It's a nice notion. And 20% of the people you spoke with say that's the best approach to saving energy, which is not true. It's a step, but a very, very small step. Right. Um, you know, turn off the lights when you leave the room. You should still tell your daughter that. <laughs> um, but the thing is, in terms of if there was one thing that you could tell your daughter about energy, it, would, that, would that be it? And a lot of people may mention that. Um, so, you know, do everything that you can. You know, bike to work, uh, use public transportation as much as you can. But if there were a few things that you could do, try to focus on the bigger behaviors rather than the smaller ones. Does that mean purchasing, uh, investing in, in energy efficiency, whether it's something like a better light bulb, all the way up to renovating your home? It, it, it takes money to make big change? It does take money to make big change. And what would be a recommendation is to try to make the amount of money spent, the initial capital spent on some of these energy investments, uh, cheaper for people. So that more of them, so, so that more people adopt these behaviors, and sort of um, there are many ways of doing that in order to sort of make a more efficient system. Is there a line that's drawn, Chazine, somewhere that people tend not to cross? They do a few things to move in the right direction, but then when it comes to either spending money or altering their lifestyle, that's where they pull back or that's where they stop. That might be the case. Um, it's it's kind of a difficult question to answer because you know. Behavior is so, um, there's so much variation in behavior. You know, you might live very close to work. I might have other reasons besides um, um, money where I live. You know, so I think that it kind of depends person to person what people can do. And so that's why there's a short list of most effective behaviors that people can do to decrease the energy con that they consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you have a deep background in psychology. And there's something uh, you mentioned called a single action bias, which is we'll do one or two things that will help and then we stop or we, we lose interest. Is that human behavior or is it just in this one sector? I think that may be human behavior. Um, it still needs to be sort of studied across different uh, um, domains mm -hmm. but for example you know if, if you're faced with a problem you might do one or two things and then in order to address the problem but because you're limited with the amount of energy and effort that you can expend you might feel that you're off the hook and move on to the next um, you know move on to the next problem, so to speak. Uh, one of the sources, the roots of this problem that you cite is essentially a failure to communicate. Environmental groups, the government, other entities involved in this simply aren't telling us well enough what we need to do to change. To a certain extent, this, a lot of this data is very difficult to find. Making this data more available to people is sort of the first step towards behavior change. Um, you know, changing, making the default option the most effective and most efficient option is also something that we need to start thinking about. Uh, you know, removing inefficient devices from the market, uh, having informational campaigns, uh, having a uh, um, public policy for uh, employing. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's um, okay. Sort of using. Um, employing a carbon tax so that people know, so that some of these energy investments become more transparent to, to individuals rather than, um, you know, uh, invisible. So, uh, whereas the scenario right now is we need to spend money to save more energy, we need to change that paradigm around and that it needs to be, there needs to be a price signal, it has to cost us more to use more energy? So we ask people um, just to rank order four different um, 
uh, types of containers, a recycled aluminum can, recycled glass bottle, a virgin aluminum can, and a virgin glass bottle. And this is just the amount of energy used to manufacture them. Right. And a lot of people think that you know, the amount of energy that goes into a recycled aluminum can is almost the same as the amount of energy that goes into a recycled glass bottle, mm -hmm. when in fact, a recycled aluminum can uses just a fraction of the amount of energy. And that's primarily because of the weight, uh, because of the weight difference between these two. Mm -hmm. Under the best case scenario, if we do all the right things and take all the right actions, we can cut our energy uses by 10 to 12 percent. That's, that's the rough estimate. Is that enough to get the general public to do this? Is that a big enough number for us to change our behavior, do you think? So there, there was this paper entitled the Stabilization Wedges. So there are a whole variety of these different wedges that go into addressing the problem of climate change. And there's the behavioral wedge. So conservation and energy efficiency is the cheapest possible option for, for decreasing our energy use. And so it, it does add up at the end of the day. So if we were to do that, like change behavior, uh, use energy efficient um, devices, appliances, cars, as well as all of these other things, we would be able to, ad to mitigate and adapt to climate change. Shazeen, final question. What did you learn about our psychology, the way we think, during, during the, the, the research that went into this study, when it comes to energy efficiency? What did, why do we think the way we do? You know, it, it's, that's a really interesting question because energy is really invisible. Again, I, if you were to ask me a lot of these questions before I went into the study, I would have answered very similarly. But the thing is we really underestimate the amount of energy used by large devices and appliances. And that serves to be a particularly uh, problematic uh, uh, um, finding. Because if we were to go after the most effective thing, the most effective thing that individuals can do at the end of the day, they might not be going after the big devices or the, the appliances they use the most. They might do one or two of these small things um, to address the problem.